Hello, my name is Kyle Pugh with Webucator. During this video, I'll be demonstrating a process of managing your errors in your C-sharp projects using a brand new technique found inside of your C-sharp 6.0 projects. We're going to be utilizing a keyword within your try-catch block called when. This acts as a filter that you can use to filter exceptions within your try-catch block. This demonstration is based on a blog post provided by Ivan Dervienko. I like to thank Ivan for allowing us to create this video based on his blog posts. Feel free to jump out to Ivan's blog found at the URL below for a full article and other tips and tricks. All right, so I've opened up Microsoft Visual Studio, in this case is Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2015, and I've created a simple Windows console application. And the only thing I've done up to this point so far is I've dropped in one statement into my main method to uh, pause the screen essentially. I've done a console.read key. That way when we start running our code here in a moment, the screen will pause and won't just open and close on me. But I can pause and wait for me to press a key so we can see the output. So before we get into this new keyword of when or filtering within our try catch block, I'm going to do a quick little recap just on the try catch block syntax and the idea of why we use it. And then we'll build upon this and take a look at this new keyword of when. So every application out there, we have the chance of potential errors or exceptions that fall into our application. As a developer, it becomes our responsibility to manage these errors, to manage these exceptions. I want to be able to catch any errors that come into my application and handle them efficiently. I don't want the application to crash on my users and put them in a situation that they can't get out of. So I need to be able to handle the exception and appropriately fix the errors that happen or at least catch them and log that information so that we again as a developer can use it. So here's a try catch block. Simple little syntax. I'm going to bring in the try keyword. I'll open up my braces. I'm going to bring in my catch. Now we may want to be able to catch specific exceptions that come out of our application. But for now I'm going to be really generic here and I'm going to catch just the top level or the base exception. And I'll open up my braces for that one. Now I can also bring in the optional keyword of finally here where we can run a block of code um, regardless if an error was caught but perhaps do a little bit of cleanup. Now I'm not going to introduce that into here. Um, we'll stick with just two of the basics, the try and the catch. Now let's think about this for a moment. We get an error introduced into our system, whatever that error may be, whether it's an, an invalid argument or an overflow exception or, or, or just the base exception class, whatever it is. Uh, but I want to be able to handle it. I want to catch that error and perform the proper code to perhaps fix it or log the information and so on. Now, what if there's multiple exceptions that you want to be able to catch? And I'm not just talking about, hey, multiple different types of exceptions, but perhaps there's one type of exception, such as an invalid argument exception, and there's multiple different types of invalid argument exceptions that I want to be able to catch and then fix or at least identify. Well, in the past, prior to our C Sharp 6.0 applications, we could do this through perhaps some logical statements like an if structure and start building out an if statement that says, okay, well, if you see this invalid argument come through, then let's make sure we catch it and perform the proper cleanup on it. Or if, if you find this invalid argument that comes through the system, then let's perform these steps that we need to go through. Right? So we can do that, but it involved bringing in some type of logical structure to catch the specific type and then handle it. Well, now in your C-sharp 6.0 applications, they've introduced the when keyword, which acts as a filter. I want to be able to try this block of code, catch a specific error, a specific exception, when something is true. Let's take a look. I'm going to, I'm going to build on a little bit of code that I've got here so far. And I'm just going to 
create a couple of little breaks inside of my code. So just after my, my catch statement here, I've got my generic exception there. I'm going to bring in the when keyword. I want to be able to catch this exception when something is true. And in my case, again, keeping it simple for this example, I'm going to say I want you to be able to catch this exception when the exception's message is equal to something specific. And then I'll say uh, invalid x data, whatever that x data happens to be. So we're going to try out a block of code. If there's an error, if there's an exception in there, we'll catch the exception. But first, before we run the catch statements, we're going to filter it. We're going to check for something very specific in there. In this case, check its exception message. Now, for my catch statements here, I'm just going to write out to the uh, console window here. I'll just write out the exceptions message. Again, keep it simple there. But now let's let's try a little bit of block of code here. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw a new exception. So we'll throw a new new exception, and this exception's message is gonna be equal to invalid x data. All right. So I'm gonna try this out. I've got my try block. Hey, go ahead and try this block of code. And if there's an error, if there's an exception in there, and we know there is, because we're gonna automatically throw one here. So it'll throw the exception. It'll catch that, and it's going to qualify it. It's going to filter it to see if the exception message is equal to what we're looking for. And if it is, then we'll spit out the message to the uh, console window. So I'll hit F5 on my keyboard, run my application, and there we have it. Invalid X data. I'm going to go ahead and close my, my console window. Now, filtering your errors, your exceptions here, it's great. And what this really allows us to do is now I can perhaps filter for many different things based on that one type of exception. So I can drop down and do another catch block. I'll say I want you to catch the exception. We'll use EX again here. But I'm going to look for a specific value filtering this exception. So once again, I'll, I'll look at its message. And this time, we'll check to see if it's equal to invalid Y data. And if it's equal to invalid Y data, then I will write it out to the console window once again. And we'll just spit out the message. All right, so we saw the first time that I ran this. I only had the, the one try block with the one catch block and with the invalid X data that we then saw uh, written out to the console window. But let's try changing it. I'm going to change it to Y data. So still looking for the same exception, just the base class exception here. But now with the filters, I'm now able to, to really narrow down that exception and look for specific values. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again, F5 on my keyboard. And now I've got my invalid Y data. Same exception here, but now including the when keyword to build a filter and really exclusively handle that exception. And we can keep going here. We can continue to bring in catch, catch blocks, continue to filter those. I could bring in kind of a catch all and just say, hey, okay, well, if you're not going to filter through any of those there, then go ahead and just catch the exception and give me the generic error message that comes back from that exception or handle it in any way that we like. But this is a quick little introduction into not only the try catch block, but now introducing the new keyword within your C Sharp 6.0 applications of when or filtering within your try catch blocks. So there you have it, utilizing the try catch block but taking it a step further within your C Sharp 6.0 applications and utilizing a filter or the when keyword to help you filter your exceptions or your errors that come into your projects. Again, I'd like to thank Ivan for allowing us to create this video based on the blog post mentioned earlier in this video. For this and other topics, feel free to jump out to the full website found at the URL provided below.